Hello everybody, Chris O'Dell from Datsusara here, hanging out on my balcony on a bit of a stormy day, but uh, I am here to talk to you about hemp and hemp geese, and uh, just kind of a short little education and some announcements. So, let's get into it. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I started off the, uh, the hemp gear company Datsusara back in 2007. We primarily made bags for uh, mixed martial arts, kind of branched out a bit since then. And uh, in 2008, we started making our first hemp geese. Those were actually a blend of hemp and cotton. Since that batch, we've gone to 100% hemp, but that, uh, that took some time to develop. But we've been doing these for a while. so. Uh, so I kind of wanted to walk you through what is hemp exactly, why we use it, where it comes from, all that good stuff. So what is hemp? Uh, the way that we define hemp here in the United States and in Europe and, and you know, if you could really sit down with proper translators and whatnot, probably the whole world would agree on this, but there is some confusion, is uh, it's cannabis. Same stuff that you would uh, smoke recreationally or whatnot. But what it is, it's an industrial version that has less than 1% THC. That's the uh, active chemical compound that uh, gives you the hallucinogenic uh, you know, effects that you would have in normal marijuana. And, uh, but it's more or less the same plant other than that. People call it a cousin whatnot, but it's still cannabis. Cannabis sativa specifically is what they use for hemp because it grows real tall. It's easier to get long fibers out of that. Um, and... You know, but it, the problem is that in other countries, they have used the word hemp to refer to a lot of things. There's sun hemp, which is a different plant. There's jute. There's sisal. And uh, you even have things like in Pakistan, they have a what they are calling a hemp weave, which is actually 80% cotton and 20% polyester. We just found out about that. It's the same weave they use for judo geese. I don't know why they call it hemp. It's beyond me, but that's what they call it. Um, so you do have some confusion uh, as far as uh, the terminology around the word and what it really is. So you have to be very careful when you're someone like me making hemp geese that you check your sources, make sure you're getting the real stuff. Because if you don't get the real stuff, you're missing out on all the benefits of hemp. So let's go over the functional benefits first. Functional benefits you have is you have, of course, it's, it's stronger. It's a nice long fiber material. And as a general rule, it's anywhere from two to even some tests will say two to eight times stronger than cotton. Now you still have to make sure it's weaved right and sourced properly and all that to make sure you get the maximum benefits. So there's a lot of work involved in that. But when done right, it's a lot stronger than cotton. So there's one benefit. It is breathable and it tends to kind of wick moisture away. It's a porous fiber. So when you roll in it, even though it may feel like it kind of has a hefty weight to it, but you're gonna feel a lot more comfortable in it. Uh, I'm just gonna be like, I have a real, I hate the heat from cotton geese. It drives me crazy. So um, hemp is a lot better as far as that's concerned. And then a huge benefit, one that we should probably uh, explain, you know, I should really just put big fat labels on the website and stuff like this, is that it's naturally antimicrobial. So what does that mean? So it basically, it doesn't allow germs to take hold, germs, fungus, molds, all that stuff, so ringworm, staph, those kind of things. It's a little over, I say it's the upper 90 percentile uh, that it, you know, fights those things off. They're even looking at using it for uh, hospital scrubs, things like that. It's really great for that. So generally, if you take care of a hemp gene, and you don't over-process the material, um, it will remain pretty fresh and, and it generally doesn't get too stinky like another ghee would even if you miss a wash or something, although I don't recommend that because that's nasty anyway. But it does have some great benefits that way and as far as a bag goes, obviously the breathable properties and the antimicrobial properties will keep that bag nice and fresh. Um, so where does hemp come from? There are only a few countries that really have a hemp textile industry. Yes, there's hemp foods coming out of Canada and other places. Um, hemp's grown in a number of countries, but the only two countries that are really producing textiles right now, you have Romania, it's a very small source, they don't even do um, hemp ghee material or anything like that, and you have China. China's been doing this stuff for thousands of years, it's one of their better industries, and as far as I'm concerned, something I like to support over there that doesn't trash their country. Oh, which reminds me, obviously there's all the environmental benefits of hemp, should have told you about that first, but let's say you're growing it in China, environmental benefits, it grows uh, from start to, to harvestable in about three to four months. You're not cutting down trees to make things with it. 
Uh, it doesn't deplete the soil, you know, and, oh, and it doesn't require hardly any pesticides or zero pesticides if you do it right. So that's a huge benefit to anywhere it's grown. So, like I was saying, um, in China, is that is the most advanced textile industry for hemp there, and that is where most of this stuff comes from. That's where we source all of our hemp from, and that's where pretty much anybody with genuine hemp uh, ghee material is going to be getting their material from. That just isn't a choice. Now, it happens to be very expensive. So, you know, you're looking at paying, when we make these, we're paying at least three times more than anybody else is paying to get a ghee done. Because it's just, it's an expensive and somewhat rare material right now. Even though it's fairly easy to grow, it doesn't have the support of something like cotton, which is just everywhere. And it's cheap to produce and easy to produce. Hemp takes a lot more processing and machines and things to kind of get it to where it needs to be. So, right now, it's pretty expensive. So when you see a high price tag on something like the Lucky Gee or My Gee's, um, there's a reason for it. It's not just a marketing thing. It's not a sensationalism thing. Uh, ooh, we've got hemp. Let's just jack the price. No, there's a good reason. Trust me, these things are really expensive. I'm probably undercharging for them. Scotty's got more of the right idea. He's, he's you know, making sure he can sustain uh, making these things because it's tough. Um, they're also very hard to produce. We have to get this fabric made, you know, material made. we got to kind of keep a close eye on it. Sometimes it takes me six months to get a batch of these out. So it's, it's a difficult thing. So try to bear with us when you see an expensive price and you see that they're out all the time. There are reasons for that, which we're, uh, we're trying to, you know, team up and work on to, uh, to fix these things. Uh, so keep an eye out for fakes too. There are some fakes out there. It's a sad thing. I don't want to get into it too much, but just make sure that you're getting the real deal and, you know, and you're getting what you paid for. Um, so, like I said, uh, there's only a few people right now that I can guarantee you have the real deal. One is, of course, Scotty uh, from Lucky Gee OTM. Uh, they are making this hemp ghee, which is pretty stylish, you know. It's, uh, it's like, I, it's more than what I would normally wear, but I love it. Uh, you know, it's got, it's just really, he did a really good job on finishing these up, making them really well. Scotty's just, you know, he's the master at making ghee. So, he did a great job on these, a nice kind of, a, he picked a lightweight, uh, hemp from you know the options that we had and everything really did a good job on that So you can probably still pick those up I think they might not be completely sold out, but they're probably close. So if you haven't picked one up yet, you might want to um, You have Jonathan from flow kimonos. He's a good guy. I know he's using real hemp as well He might be out by now, but he'll have more eventually um, And like I said, we're working with him too. So um, so you guys know too when I'm accusing anybody of being having fake hemp products I actually work with other companies. I don't charge anybody for it. I'm just happy to help out because I believe in the cause of hemp. I think it's a good thing. There's plenty of room in the market for all of us. And um, I'm just happy to help out, make sure people are getting the real deal because you will get fake hemp passed off to you. Sometimes you don't even know. You and I have had fake hemp passed off to me in the past and it took some time to correct things. Um, I have my new hemp geese coming out within a few months. They are very... Um, I like to keep mine kind of a little more plain and simple and just let the materials and construction speak for themselves. Uh, the pants are going to look a little bit like this. We're actually changing the material a little bit, but we're doing some thicker belt buckles. I, I don't know why. People will just make them thicker. It seems like that would help. So uh, we're doing that. We're going to do a batch of uh, you know black, black ones and, uh, and then a batch of uh, natural white, so a little bit of both. Probably be a few months before those come around, but if you sign up uh, for the email alerts, which you can do on the on the Gee page on my site, then you'll know as soon as they go up for pre-order. And uh, yeah, so like I said, I, I hope this kind of helps. I hope I didn't ramble or talk too fast. I probably did, but uh, there you have it, kind of a hemp Gee 101. And uh, I think I've had enough. It's bringing us to rain again soon, so I'm coming inside. Take care, guys.